As Beijing desperately looks at the ways to increase new births, they've started to pay attention to the number of abortions performed in China. For the past five years, the official annual number of abortions in China was 9.5 million. This number is understated due to the exclusion of abortions performed in unregistered clinics. The real number, according to Wu Shangchun at the Research Institute of Family Planning, is about 13 million. It means that every year, 13 million lives are terminated, while less than 10 million are born in China. Hello, I'm Lei. Welcome to Lei's Real Talk. China's birth rate is extremely low, and Beijing is seriously worried. The official number of new births in 2021 was 10.6 million, but experts say this number is inflated. Chinese economist Ren Zeping noted in an April 2021 article that the number of births recorded by the Ministry of Public Security is 20% less than the official number. In China, every newborn must be registered with the local Public Security Bureau to obtain an ID. I believe the Ministry of Public Security's number is more accurate, putting China's number of new births last year at 8.5 million. This is the lowest birth rate since the CCP came to power in 1949. Last August, 1 p.m., the executive vice president of the China Family Planning Association said that 40% of abortions in China are performed on unmarried women. This means that married women had a total of 6 to 8 million abortions every year. That's a lot of lives lost to married couples, almost the same as the total number of new births in the year. The high abortion rate among married couples can have several reasons. The first is that the second or third child policies didn't make a difference to couples' decision about abortion. They continue to want just one child. The second reason is that sex-selective abortions are still performed in China on a large scale, as many parents want to have a boy. And the third reason is that medically required embryonic abortions are high in China. This type of abortion occurs when the fetus stops growing. Chen Su Wen, a Chinese OBGYN, said that 25% of abortions in China are in this category. The high incidence of embryonic abortion is linked to a large amount of women having had multiple prior abortions. 47.5% of China's abortions were performed on women under 25. In addition, 56% are having repeated abortions, with 13.5% having more than three abortions. Chinese authorities are now very concerned with the high incidence of abortions or repeated abortions by young unmarried women. They are leading to higher infertility rates and are posing a major threat to national population security. Consequently, in February, Beijing announced the launch of a special campaign to intervene in abortions by unmarried people. It caused public panic that the authorities would ban abortions or make abortion on unmarried women illegal. As much as the authorities want to ban abortions, it's difficult to do so. In the past 40 years, China has aborted close to 400 million babies. For decades of the state-enforced abortion policy has changed Chinese women's perception of childbearing, sexual relations, and family responsibility at the cost of infertility, health, and social problems. Now the authorities are using administrative means trying to reverse the declining birth rate, but it's just impossible. The variety of tactics they came up with only led to public outcry and mockery. One expert called for a bedwarming initiative to solve the problem of single men in rural China not finding a wife. Local governments immediately picked up the term and launched the so-called bedwarming projects. But Chinese are turned off by the term. A women's organization issued a strong-worded statement. There's nothing wrong with being concerned about the single men in rural areas, but the term bedwarming project stings the ears. Are women just bed warmers for men? This lack of basic respect for women, the lack of basic respect for marriage, should be rejected. In Yihuang County of Jiangxi Province, the local government is playing the role of a matchmaker by collecting information on single women. The program is to build a so-called marriage service platform 
that will map females over 26 years old in a county and start matchmaking for them. Chinese call older single men leftover men and older single women leftover women. In China, the leftover men are mostly jobless men or poorer men from rural China, while the leftover women are usually well-educated professional women in urban areas. The Yihuang County government took on the daunting task of pairing well-educated single women with poor jobless men. The program says, if a leftover woman finds an unemployed or jobless husband, the platform will help with skills training and priority job placement and provide guaranteed loans to those who wish to start their own business. The program also promises eligible newlyweds a 30,000 yuan home purchase subsidy and a 10,000 yuan maternity allowance per child. This nevertheless caused an uproar on social media and was poorly received. People accused the government of treating women as a fertility object to achieve its goals without considering their needs. For decades, the CCP has regarded Chinese women's uterus as a subject of its planning. It started as part of Deng Xiaoping's blueprint for China to achieve economic goals. After the Cultural Revolution, when Deng Xiaoping assumed the leadership role, he started a new policy to grow the economy. In 1978, then proposed the per capita goal for China. To meet this goal, the numerators, economy and GDP, had to grow, and the denominator, total population, had to stay constant. Before this point, in the early 1970s, a two-child policy was in place during the Mao era. China's natural population growth declined steadily, and the total fertility rate fell from 5.71 in 1970 to 2.24 in 1980 close to the natural replacement level of 2.0. By the way, at 2.0 total fertility rate, or TFR, women on average have two children, which is the number needed to replace every couple and for the population to remain steady. There was no need to further reduce China's fertility rate at that point, but to carry out Deng's per capita GDP goal, the state wrote family planning into the Chinese constitution in March 1978. In October of that year, Beijing set the goal of reducing population growth to under 1%, and that was the beginning of the one-child policy. During implementation, the policy was met with resistance, but then forcefully stamped down the opposition. During the 1980s, then-CCP leader Hu Yaobang and Zhao Ziyang did not agree with the forced one-child policy and tried to be more moderate in its implementation. However, after the Tiananmen Square massacre in 1989, when Jiang Zemin came to power, he greatly embraced and strengthened the policy. In 1992, China's total fertility rate from a sample survey was 1.57 well below the replacement level of 2.0. Low fertility results persisted during the 1995 and the 1997 demographic sample surveys. The 2000 census found that China's fertility rate was only 1.22, but the authorities attributed the low TFR to under-reporting and adjusted it to 1.8. From 1989 to 2012, during the 13 years of Jiang Zemin's rule and the decade of Hu Jintao's rule, the CCP turned a blind eye to the declining fertility problem, despite numerous experts calling attention to it. During the 2010 census, the total fertility rate slid to 1.18, followed by the sample survey in 2015, which found the TFR at 1.05. Xi Jinping had already come to power, that year, he announced a full two-child policy. Last year, the CCP announced the three-child policy, but it's too late now. We've seen that these policies did nothing to improve China's demographic crisis, and the economic and social problems it has generated are beyond the regime's ability to amend now. Deng Xiaoping was the mastermind behind China's economic reforms. He was also the one who enforced the one-child policy. As long as the CCP continues to pursue its GDP goals and doesn't return family planning rights to families, the population crisis in China won't be solved 
and will haunt the regime like a nightmare. Here are some other videos I recommend on the same topic. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.